Well, hello, and as promised, we have with us Italia Sergi, and she is the director of AmeriCorps Seniors. We've been doing a wonderful podcast with her, and don't forget all of the resources, including how you can become a part of this great organization, will also be on the show notes to our podcast. You'll see this on our YouTube channel, and the podcast is also not only on iTunes and not only on Spotify, but every disseminator and agelesstraveler.com. But I wanted to show you something. This is, I don't know if you can tell because maybe backwards, but this is GG, it's for Good Grief. And Good Grief is an organization for children who've lost their parents early in life. And I am one of those children. And it was an incredible six years of helping kids at a time of life that I had no help. So don't, don't be afraid. Volunteer, jump in to the part of your life that you wish you had some support. Give support to others. And when I left, I got a heart. I got a globe. I got a peace sign. And I got an acorn for growth. And the only reason that I left was I moved. And now they're doing it online. So yeah. that is something I'm going to talk to you about, too. So let, let's talk about you. You have a pretty big job. I mean, it's an impressive job. What was that career path to get this job that everybody wants? So, <laughs> and then when they get it, yes. they say, oh, it is, wish for. But all right. It's a, it's a big job, um, but one that I am really, really honored to to be able to, to do. Um and I think that my my journey and what kind of drew me to uh, volunteerism really started when I was a kid. I would go with my mom uh, to deliver um, food baskets uh, to people who were sick and could not get out to the grocery store. And so volunteerism has been a part of my life since I was little. I don't think I would have had the language to understand what we were doing. Um, you know, I just thought my mom is being really nice and I want to go along. And so she would, uh, we would work together to pack the baskets and then I would be able to ride along in the car with her as she delivered the baskets um, to people who, who couldn't get out and get their groceries. Um, so that was kind of something that had been instilled in me. Um, my background is in social work. Uh, so I love getting out and working in community. And so um, part of how I ended up at AmeriCorps Seniors is that I worked for a nonprofit called Jumpstart for Young Children. And part of my responsibility there was to find a group of people that would be interested in working with preschoolers to help them get ready and make sure they were ready for kindergarten. And so through doing that, I did that with college students. And when we were searching for other adults, someone told me to look into this program that was at AmeriCorps Seniors. And so I found a foster grandparent program in the community in Los Angeles. They joined our program and started working with the preschoolers. Um, and then that organization, the office that I ran at the time, got the opportunity to apply for AmeriCorps Seniors um, grant. Applied for the grant myself and <laughs> had a program um, and ran it. And then um, through mentorship, uh, mentors that have been in my life, um, they pointed out to me that this position, this appointed position was available and I applied for it and was just really excited to be able to, to continue to serve. Um, and I think the thing that really speaks to me about AmeriCorps Seniors is just kind of what we talked about. Um, it is older adults who have so much lived experience, so many skills and talents that they've developed over their lifetime. And they were so willing to share that in the classroom with the children that they were serving. Teachers started to talk about how they were so impacted um, by the service that they were providing. My office, even though we had mostly worked with college students, we started to learn, my whole team started to learn um, about uh, the things that our, our uh, foster grandparents were doing and started engaging with them. And it really shifted all of our perspective um, and so it was just something that I wanted to continue to do in a place that I wanted to continue to work. So I feel like though my job is big, I am honored to have it. Well, we're, it's, it's delightful that you are with us because your articulation is so clear. Because the idea of volunteerism can be murky. People want it, but they really don't know how to go about it. And that's why I was so interested in AmeriCorps Seniors to be here. 
But uh, you, you said a magic word. It's a magic word of aging, and that is mentorship. I want to turn it around. Mentorship usually means somebody with skills helping somebody with lesser skills. So mm -hmm. if you play an older person with a younger person or more advanced, if it's in a corporation. And of course, one of the things that's important is we use our skills. But how about the other way? Now we talk about reverse mentorship. Mm -hmm. Younger people teaching older people, particularly technology. Have you seen that through AmeriCorps seniors, where it's the seniors that get the training from the younger folks? In a yeah, I will. Uh, I'll give you an example. And this happened, um, you know, when we were all in the midst of the pandemic. Um, so in Colorado, uh, we brought together an AmeriCorps two AmeriCorps seniors RSVP programs with the NCCC program, and the NCCC program recruits uh, young people from 18 to 26. And so these two groups came together to do contact tracing for the Department of Health in Colorado. Um, and there was a lot of that reverse um, mentorship. The older adults helped the young people kind of with the soft skill of being able to talk to people about something that at that time that was really scary. Um, the, the young people weren't having good like callback rates and, and our older adults were like knocking it out the park. Um, so they trained them on how to talk. And the young people train the older adults on how to use that um, the, the contact tracing system that uh, the Department of Health had put in place. And so they were working together in teams to really serve the community in what was a really difficult time. Um, and the really exciting thing that came out of that was the Department of Health offered both the younger people and the older adults positions within the Department of Health to continue to help them work on this. So yeah. it was just a really successful kind of partnership of bringing them together. Yeah. I mean, part of this, look, we bash our government. It's one of our national rights is to bash our government, I think. But look, <laughs> it, it does some things, right? It does a couple of things that work. Uh, I, I wanted, I, I had an idea while you were talking. It's very dangerous when I have an idea, by the way. Uh, so our American, uh, our Aegis Ambassador Program really are for people over the age of 50. The idea is to never stop contributing to the world. But when you mentioned your other program, 18 to 26, that's when foster children begin to get aged out of foster care. And they get lost often because we all know if we're parents that starting at age 18 to 26 is when they still need us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they begin to realize that they do. Before, like it was said, I think Mark Twain said, uh, when I was 15, I thought my father was stupid. By the time I was 20, I couldn't believe how much he had learned. So, so around that time, so I was wondering whether you, you ever recruit for that program out of the foster care system, because it would be so great for these kids to get pathfinding through that for their own lives. Yeah, actually, now I can't tell you the statistics because I can't keep their statistics in my head. Um, but, <laughs> but I do know um, that they do have um, they do have members who are foster children and who are coming into the program. Um, and the reason I know this is uh, the director was just sharing a story about how they support the young people. Um, because they're all coming together. they It's actually a residential program. So the the, the young people who volunteer, they live in campuses. Um, they travel together in vans. They learn to you know cook together and take care of their space together. Um, but he talked about, you know, for some of the young children who are coming out of foster care, they are bringing everything they have in a suitcase. Um, and he talked about how they really do help support them and get them ready for the world after their time um, in their program. And that program is a year long, but they do have uh, members who stay two years and then maybe turn into leaders and maybe are there for three or four years. But um, they do recruit uh, from the foster care system and they welcome those those children to come in. They mentor them. They, um, you know, help them learn how to move in the world. Um, and even get things like, you know, how to set up your doctor's appointments, you know, because they do have to do those over the course of the year that they're together. So they really support them. So that is a program in the, in the agency that um, does bring, bring uh, young people in. 
if there's something that you see that you want to give to the world, if there's a mistake in the world, if there's something you want to fix, you don't have to just think about it. You can actually do something about it. And you will find on Pathfinder in AmeriCorps, and I'm going to get have you give me and, and even spell out the URL in a minute, you will find some way to fix that. Foster children, I had a very good friend who became a multimillionaire, by the way, who was in foster care. And most, uh, and and I said to him, how did you manage your life through this? And he said, one person, one person said, put their hand on my arm and said, you're worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it changed everything for him. So that's what can be done. I know, I'm, I'm a very, yeah. You should see my kids, they cry at cartoons, <laughs> but all right. So let's go back. How do we find America? Tell us again. Okay, so you go to americorps.gov, A-M-E-R-I-C-O-R-P-S dot G-O-V. Make sure you put the S in there, dot G-O-V. Um, and when you go there, you can uh, go to the AmeriCorps Seniors page and you'll be able to find the Pathfinder, um, which will allow you to search for opportunities uh, by state and county uh, that you can participate in. If you do have uh, younger people in your family who are looking for opportunities, when they go to AmeriCorps.gov, they can also choose uh, one of the other programs on the website. It will take them to their page and they can sign up to learn more there. So before we leave you, um, what's next is the question. Uh, is there another program coming up? Is there another event coming up? If you, What are you looking forward to in the mission that you're accomplishing right now? Uh, the things that I'm looking forward to right now are things that we just launched. Um, so AmeriCorps Seniors has a fourth program that's called the Senior Demonstration Program. Um, and they are not all over the country. It's an opportunity to kind of test out new ways to serve or new ways that our service can support uh, our volunteers. And we launched two new programs just recently. One is about workforce development. So how can we use service to help older adults return to the workforce if that's what they want to do or change careers? Um, so we know that we are living longer, healthier lives, and some of us are staying in the workforce for longer. And so I really wanted to see, could service be that opportunity? It works for our young people. I think it could work for our older adults as well. And then the other one is working with our Native nations. So really giving them the opportunity to develop programming and following their leads uh, to develop programming that is uh, fits within the needs that they have that may be different and also that align with their cultural practices. So really um, leaning into the sovereignty of those nations and figuring out how can we come alongside them and help them to engage their elders in uh, the things that their communities need. So those are two demonstrations that we have going and I'm really looking forward to what we can learn and then what we can share with the rest of the country. Um, you know, we are a federal agency. We're here to support all communities and all nonprofits, even if they don't get a grant from us. And one of the ways we do that is we share what we learn and we share our research freely um, to help them as they develop programming in their own communities and through their own, uh, you know, means. Well, this is terrific. And I will say that uh, older adults can work, do work, want to work, unfortunately, sometimes have to work. But yeah. the point is that we do get marginalized. I was just at the United Nations um, uh, Live Day of Older Persons. The International Day of Older Persons was October 2nd. And I met the folks from Germany. And they have that exact program, that government program. Before you leave the workforce, they teach you how to stay in the workforce. Even if you've been what we now call off-boarded mm -hmm. by your corporation. So it's a, it's a full-blown government program all by itself. Very interesting. Something to connect with and take a look. And the other is I live in Palm Springs. I live on tribal land. And I am totally surrounded by uh, indigenous nations and uh, tribal nations and what's going on. And it's going to be a ball. You're going to have a ball. Because these are some of the most committed, sophisticated thinkers mm -hmm. that you will come across. And they've had to do everything for themselves for a very long time. 
yeah. and they know their needs. And boy, I envy you with that particular program. That's great. So thank you so much for being with us. And let thank me you. everybody what we're doing here. You've got to go to our Facebook salon. It's free. You join it. You get the best uh, experts in travel, the best experts in healthy travel. We're now we're doing something called blepharitis, which is eye problems when you travel. So it's it, there'll be no barriers. And more than anything else, you meet each other. You tell the stories of your own travel. You see what you would love to be able to accomplish in life. And then we guide you to places like AmeriCorps, our uh, seniors, so that you can accomplish it. And then we empower you with our courses, a like speak out communication, how to move, touch, and inspire anyone, anywhere, at any time. So how do you get all this? Well, subscribe to the YouTube right now. That's an easy one. Click a button. Go to ageistraveler.com. Join the salon. Easy one. Click a button. And you're on your way. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This was wonderful. Thank you. Of course. Take care.